Hey, what's going on, everybody? It is July 7th, 2019. This is the Mo Banter Podcast. This is episode number six, I want to say. <laughs> um, I am Mo. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Um, yeah, so it's uh, 4th of July weekend out here in the United States. Uh, for anybody who is in the States who happens to listen, hey, happy 4th of July. I hope you guys were safe. I hope everybody was safe and sound. I hope if you're old enough to drink beer, and even if you're not old enough to drink beer, that you were responsible and didn't do something stupid that caused you to suffer severe harm or cause harm unto others. Um, so if you're safe and you partied hard, plus one for the win. Um, yeah, uh, I don't know what I have to talk about. Just a bunch of random thoughts. Uh, this time there's really no specific thought process. Just that I went through a, a Labor Day or sorry, uh, Independence Day weekend with a lot of stuff happening that made me think you know and i like to th- speak on some of the things that i think about just because then i just kinda, i feel like it gets lost and i can never kind of reflect back on it um so i guess to start off you know kid playing golf his golf game is is improving and and watching him improve and me giving him advice on what to do to improve um, kind of leads on like this rabbit hole in my head, um, where I start talking to myself and go, damn, I'm, I'm kind of like my dad now. <laughs> and, you know, and, and little things like that. Um, but let's start off with, I, I guess just, again, this is just the kind of general thoughts. I don't, I don't have anything to really talk about. So like, I guess 4th of July came about and my dad has this thing where, he's happy when he gets to spend time with his family. You know, he's, he's at that age now where he's a little bit older and his, his kids are starting to live lives where they no longer need him. I am 10 years older than my, than my baby brother. I'm 13 years older than my baby sister. They're not babies anymore, but you know, that's what I call them. And you know, we all got kids. I have a 14 year old. My sister has a, what is she, five at this point? Six. She's going to be six this year, so she's five, has a five-year-old girl. My brother has a five-year-old girl. And he also has a brand new girl. Uh, Two months, three months, two or three months. (laughs) I'm really bad with this. Um, But, yeah, you know, so we all got our lives. Um, So every time we get to get together, you know, my dad's very happy. And he he was happy this 4th of July. But my sister wasn't there. You know, she was working. She works at a supermarket. So most times they're open. And it, he just gets to thinking, you know, like, oh, you know, there's always somebody missing. There's always somebody missing. If it's not one of my kids, it's a relative. And, you know, I understand where he's coming from. You know, it, when you have the time, you want everything to be perfect. You know, it's not, he, it's not that he was disingenuous. Like, he was disingenuous that only this select family came about, which was me, my brother, and my wife. Um, son, um, a brother-in-law, my sister-in-law, and then, you know, like the nieces and the nephews. Later on, my, my aunt showed up and my cousin showed up and my other brother-in-law and his son showed up, you know, my nephew. And, but, you know, before, it, you know, before they got that, it's only, you know, just enjoy the moment. Just enjoy the moment. You know, and it's something that I tell my son. It's something that my dad wasn't doing. It's just, it. I don't find myself having to correct negative thoughts or negative perceptions about a situation in the family. It's just that if there's a different way to to see that in a positive flow, for whatever reason, I find myself being really hippie about it lately. And I stopped really focusing about the negative aspect. You know, there there are some times where I'm I'm super negative and, and I know sometimes like, especially if you go through some of the podcasts, I sound, you know, ecstatic. (laughs) He, he's he's really positive about a lot of things. No. no, 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 no. I try to be positive about a lot of things. I I, I attempt to to try to be as positive as I can through life because I did go through a large chunk of my life being being overtly negative about the things that I could change that weren't changing fast enough for me and, and my family. But that kind of always put me in a headspin. You know, like, I felt like I was busting my ass. I felt like I was doing everything correct to move to move ahead in life, but it wasn't happening fast enough. And 
as of tomorrow, I'll be giving my two weeks on my current spot. And two weeks after that, uh, which is a Monday, I will be holding a new position at one of the most famous gaming companies in the world. Making the most money I've ever made in my life being QA. And I, I, I don't want to be focusing on negative stuff when so many good things have happened to me. But it wasn't always like that, you know what I mean? And and that's, and that's, kind of what got me thinking about all this, you know. I I guess because all this happened at the same time, you know, because I told everybody in my family, you know, I got a new job, and they were all superly, superly excited, and happy for me. Oh, congratulations, congratulations! Yeah, that's so good. That's so good. You know, so everybody was happy and, and it was great about it, but you know, like it, it got me thinking. Everybody's so happy about this, but like before this situation, even prior to this, there was a lot of times where I found myself being overly negative. Oh, this is not gonna work. God, I should have had this job. Oh, why didn't I get this job? There's these people bullshitting me about this. So in trying to keep that with the flow, when my dad said, "Hey, you know, I wish they were here," I'm like, "Dude, just enjoy the moment." You know what I mean? We we cannot focus. On what's not here, what we can fix, what we wish could be here, who could be here, what you know, how we wish the situation was, you know, what the situation is, what the situation is. Unfortunately, you know what I'm saying. I was able to take. I had a long four day weekend. Um, you know, thanks to the place that I work at currently. You know, they gave me the fourth, the fifth off, and so I had a four day, and it was cool. It was chill. You know, played some. Uh, I didn't play some golf. I watched my kid play some golf. <laughs> And we went out with the fam and and just chilled for a bit. Caught up on season two of Stranger Things, even though season three is out. And, you know, I just told him, like, be in the moment. Just relax. There's nothing you can do. Yeah, I wish my sister was here, you know. I mean, I'm going to get a little bit personal. You know, my parents split up mm, ten years ago, roughly. I want to say roughly ten years ago. Maybe a little bit longer. So they've been split up for a bit, you know. And... We have family events where my mom comes with her boyfriend. And, you know, she comes to the house. And, I, you know, especially when it's for stuff from my son. If we do something at that house, you know, I tell everybody, like, hey, look, I'm inviting my mom. And it's not even, like, a thing where, like, and this is part of the thing where, like, people would get mad at me for being this way. I go, look, I invited my mom. Did you ask my dad? Did you ask him? I'm like, no, I just invited him. That's my mom. You know, that's 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 my son's god- uh, grandmother. You know, like, how am I not going to? Invite my mom to a birthday party. Like, if she wants to come, cool. She says she's uncomfortable. She's uncomfortable. She says that she's not comfortable because of the boyfriend. I don't give a fuck. The boyfriend has been nothing but nice to my son. Whether or not he likes me because of the way that my mom still likes to help me at fucking 36 years old, 20 to 37. If if he's not content with that part of it, I understand it. I, I really do. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't, I, don't I don't ask for help. That That is the one thing about me and my family now. Like, I don't ask for help. Um, unless I really, really, really feel like I really, really need it, I don't ask for help. You know what I'm saying? But my mom helps me out whenever she can because she feels bad for me that I have to go through a bunch of stuff, you know, public transportation and, and everything else. And it's one of those things where I, I don't mind doing what I have to do in order to provide for my family. That means I have to take public transport, or that means I have to stay overtime, or that means whatever it means. It means, and that's what's going to happen. I'm sorry I'm sniffling. I don't know why I'm sniffling so much. You know, so if, if that's a situation he's upset with, I understand it completely. But as far as, like, inviting him to a family gathering, he's always been super, super nice to my son. So regardless of what may transpire in his personal relationship with my mom, because, you know, you, you hear the drama. I haven't really been there for a lot. And I ever heard some of the drama. What am I supposed to do? My mom's a grown ass woman. You know what I'm saying? So all that is separate to me. All that is separate. He's nice to my son. My mom is my mom. My mom is my son's grandmother. So she's invited. So, you know, but like when it comes to like 4th of July, Thanksgiving, Christmas, usually you usually have to split those holidays. And, you know, sometimes I wish it didn't have to be that way. When I was a kid, that was like one of the few times that my parents weren't fighting. <laughs> you know, when they were too busy thinking about other people in the family at that moment to be fighting. 
So they wouldn't fight. You know, they would wait until Black Friday, July 5th, December 26th, stop for the 31st. <laughs> My friends fought a lot, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm surprised. I'm surprised they, they lasted as long as they did. I think they lasted something like 20, 25, 26, 27 years, something like that. And, you know, and they, they gave it a good run and they felt they were better off without each other. And that's the current situation. But if, if if I myself put myself focused on the fact that I don't have my mom there, I'm going to miss out on what that day was. And that day was just us getting drunk, watching the hood. <laughs> you know, this guy get blown the fuck up because fireworks. And, you know, I was there with my nieces, my nephews. And, you know, and I burned my thumb, you know, trying to, trying to think, well, you know, trying to take care of my little niece, my little niece's needs to light a sparkler that wasn't going to fucking light. And, and, you know, like, and, and then even now, like I saw her today. So it's been like two days. And the first thing she has, I go, I go up to her and I go, Hey baby. She goes, Unky Mo, is your thumb thumb? Okay. And I was like, Oh, <laughs> you know, like she wore my heart. Like she, like she wore me down. She wore my heart. And I was like, damn, she remembered. Like, she was like, she asked. That was the first question. It was She asked, how was, how was my thumb? You know, because she was there. She was she was the niece I was trying to light the sparkler for, and she's the one that asked. And I was like, oh, okay, worth it. <laughs> I'll, I'll get my thumb burned for that moment. You know what I'm saying? The moment that I just experienced with her, I would get my thumb burned 10 out of 10 times just so she can be like, Unky Mo, how's your thumb thumb? You know, and, you know, it, it lets me know that she loves me. <laughs> Um, but you know, but that's, that's the reason why I, I try to always stay in, in a positive mindset is things happen, things happen all the fucking time and we can let these little things destroy us or we can grow from them, learn from them and try to be better. Um, and, and the reason why some of this came about was because I was talking to my son, you know, my son, my son's golf is getting better. Yeah. This year alone, he's, he's improved greatly. Greatly, like in, in longer courses where he's usually in the teens, he's shooting single digits now, including yesterday, brand new course. He shot a plus six and they said it was equivalent to another golf course that he started off playing, I believe, last summer. And the first time he played there, I think he shot like a plus 17 or something. And for anybody not familiar with golf scores, so basically zero is par. Um, if you can do better than par, then you shoot a negative score, negative one, negative two, negative three. If you shoot over that score, then it's a plus one, plus two. So if you, you actually want a negative score. Now there are certain modes or certain tournaments that are scored a little bit differently where actually a positive score is better, but those are very few and far in between. Uh, but the normal rule of thumb is, you know, a, a lower score, a negative score is better in golf than a positive score. So my kid started shooting, you know, like he was shooting plus 17, plus 16. And it took him a while at that other course to get in the single digits. And it wasn't until I think earlier this year. Um, but he wasn't consistent. Like he was he was getting better at courses that he was familiar with because he was developing a game around them. So every time I, I see a new course, I go, okay, cool. He might shoot like a plus nine or a plus. And depending on how many holes, I always think he's going he's gonna to bogey. He might par a couple of them, but he's always going to bogey most holes just because he's not familiar. But nah, he's been improving his shot. You know, he's been improving his shot, his game, and he shot a plus six. And he actually started it with a on the first tee. And I recorded it and I was hoping it would go in. He he laid down a beautiful shot and it rolled. And I held my breath because it hit and it kept rolling to the hole and it rolled behind the hole. And actually on the video camera and on the on the video that I took, you can hear everybody go. <gasps> And I saw like, oh, and I like I excel. I was like, no, oh, I thought I had it on tape because he actually has a hole in one, and I missed it because he doesn't like us. Uh, he doesn't like us following him or, or or like tailgating him. So we don't, you know, leave him alone. We let him go, you know, do his thing. But we always watch him tee off on the first hole just just to see him tee off, you know, kind of like a, like a boat, you know, <laughs> taking off. You know, it's like you got to be there to 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 see him off. So that's what we do. So I thought I was going to get it and did it. And, but, you know, he shot a plus six. And I was like, damn, you know, that, that was good. And cleaning that birdie on that first hole. So, you know, I was like, hey, so what you shoot? I had him as a plus seven because I saw him par the last hole because it was kind of like a roundabout. So I saw him par. I'm like, okay, so he has a par. He has a negative one. There's seven holes. I was like, he would probably average a bogey. Um, but he came in and won. He came in one better than my expectation because I had him at plus seven, plus six. But little by little, I've just been talking to him because he gets so frustrated with himself and and, and and I'm not saying that 
what I've been telling him has made him better. But I do record a lot of his shots in slow motion because sometimes he'll have some really beautiful shots and other times he won't. And we'll discuss, you know, we'll discuss why that is. And 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 the one thing I always tell him, and 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 little by little, it it, it seems that I'm telling him these things because that's that's kind of like the dream that I have to go through, but on a grander scale, is I always tell him, find your shot, find your shot. Don't worry that these kids can out drive you by 70, 60 yards. You know, in some cases, some of these kids are 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 fucking beastly. They're out driving him by like a hundred yards, easy. You know, they're getting two fifty, two sixty off their drivers. My kid averages like in the 150, 160s with his drivers. And then at that, he's not really consistent. But when he when he has a shot, it's a beautiful shot down the middle. So I tell him, look, man, find your shot. And what I mean by that is I'm not I'm not asking him to drive it 200 yards. Just find your shot. Make, make sure that you practice a shot that is always that is more consistently down the middle than goes off to the side. And he, you know, he'll practice and he'll get some like, yeah, there it goes. And then he'll shoot some and they kind of veer off a little bit and then he'll hit some. And, he, and this has become a rarer occurrence now than it was, say, two years ago, where he's just, you know, hitting them towards the borders of, of whatever green he's at. And, you know, so I always try to put everything into perspective for him. I go, look, man, you used to come out here and hit the nets all the time. Little by little, that window's getting smaller and smaller. You're hitting much nicer shots now than you were even three months ago you're hitting them more consistently within a, a smaller window than you were even three months ago so just keep trying to make that window smaller find a shot where that window is super super small these are going to be your fundamentals once you have that swing you can adjust that swing to be as powerful as you want and little by little, yeah, you know, he's not always going to listen. He's a teenager. But little by little, I think he's been kind of picking up. He's been taking a lot of my my coaching. I don't criticize my kid. You know, I coach him. I'm like, hey, this is what I noticed. You know, when, when you come down, sometimes you drop your forearm. Sometimes you crack your wrist. Keep You know, watch out for those things. You know, I'm just coaching him. I'm, I'm not one to try to tell my kid that he's an idiot for not listening to me. I'm not going to be like, hey, you got to listen to me or else, you know, blah, blah, blah. Like, look, man, it, it's that's his sport. I, I am more familiar with basketball, baseball, even boxing and, and fighting and, and stuff like that. You know, he wanted to play golf. So I researched golf. I play the game a little bit just so I can be like, hey, this works for me. This is what I saw so-and-so do. Hey, this, you know, I saw this video on Instagram of this of this tour professional in Europe or whatever the case may be. Or this female college golfer. Look at the way she swings. Look at the way he swings. Look at the way they swing. See that? Like, see how, like, the arm, you know, and we'll, we'll go through it. And I try to tell him, like, hey, you're doing this, you're doing that. You know, it, he has to find his shot. So that's what we've been working on. And all of that whole beginning and story that kind of means nothing to, to <laughs> well, it doesn't mean nothing. It means something to me. It doesn't mean anything. But I guess in the grand scheme of what I'm about to say is going outwards is, is that that's kind of what I've been trying to tell my kid is find your shot. And in myself, that's kind of been my whole career, find, finding my shot. You know, and, and I started off at Sony 13 years ago, and I was I was a QA tester for 10 bucks an hour doing the overnight shift from 7 p.m. to 4 a.m. And then I moved over to Activision at 10 bucks an hour, went to Treyarch at 11 bucks an hour, became the lead at Treyarch two or three months later, got up another raise about a month later after that to 12.50 an hour. Um, averaged 80 to 90 hours a week um, gained and, I, and I've said a bunch of this stuff already gained like 100 plus pounds there you know left came back finished you know did a couple more games worked at Blizzard for 4 or 5 years and I'm gonna say that is where I found my shot at Blizzard um, you know lately Blizzard has been in the news for everything that's happening, you know, the mass layoffs. And now you hear certain people bitching about conditions and this, this, and that. And I'm going to deviate just a little bit because that does bug me a little bit because look, I was at Blizzard for five years. I know a lot of the higher ups. I never met any of them with the exception of Mike Morheim and Ben Kilgore. 
Mike Morheim is honestly one of the best fucking people I've had the privilege in my life to say hello to. He has this aura, this energy of just like a creative, caring person. You know, like he didn't come into this industry, the video game industry, to make a shit ton of money. It just happened because he was so passionate about the product that they were building. That the product they were building were essentially masterpieces. And they made Blizzard what they are. You know, not just Mike, you know, everybody else. But like I said, you know, I'm more familiar with Mike. You know, there was a lot of creative people there. And credit to, to everybody who was there in the beginning. Others at Blizzard did not share that same type of compassion or passion. They held their higher position over other people. They lorded it over other people. They made sure that they knew to let you know that that was your boss. That, you know, they were your boss. That basically you were their bitch for as long as that was your boss. A lot of the people who are leaving Blizzard, who have outspokenly said, oh, well, they're doing this now and it's awful. And this is a lot of those people who are doing that now are guilty of doing the same shit. They're accusing Blizzard of doing now of not caring for the of not caring for their users, not caring for their teams, not caring. They're responsible for the same shit. It's just behind the scenes. And that's the type of shit that that irks me. You're fine promoting a negative workplace. You're fine pr- promoting bullshit behavior. You're fine treating your subordinates like shit until you're treated like shit. That doesn't make any fucking sense. Treat people the way you would like to be treated. That that it's it's that fucking simple. I treat everybody that I run across with a certain level of common decency, common respect. Hello, how are you? Good morning. The minute I feel you don't not necessarily appreciate that, but you're not going to at least give me that courtesy back, well then fuck you. It's that fucking simple. If I can if I can be the courteous one say, hey, good morning, how are you? I, I get every once in a while, you know, people are just upset. People are are angry. I get it. I get it. I'm the same fucking way. I'm the same fucking way. So like little little instances of, I guess disrespect or, or or being curt, are fine. I completely understand. But when it's a persistent thing of that person just being a complete and utter asshole, well, fuck you. <laughs> you know, fuck you. I'm not gonna say good morning to you. You might as well fucking not even exist because that's how it's gonna be. You know, with with me, it, it's kind of that way. I don't give a fuck what your title is. I don't give a fuck what your job is. If I have the decency to just say, hey, hello, good morning, nice to meet you, whatever. Bullshit me back. Bullshit me back. Bullshit me. I'm not one for bullshit, but at that moment right there, just bullshit me back. You know what I'm saying? It, it doesn't cost you much to say good morning. Pleasure. Doesn't have to fucking be played. Just hey, good morning, sweet. Drink coffee. Get the fuck out of my face. We don't have to talk. Nothing. That's fine. We can leave it at that. We can leave it at hello. You don't even have to say good morning. Just hello. You don't want to say good morning to me? Fuck it. Just say hello to me. That's cool. If I say hi, if I say whatever, that that and when you hold a door for somebody and they kind of just like walk through, you don't even fucking say thank you, dude. I hate that shit so much. I hate that shit. And for people to go. Oh, what does it matter? You know, like you're going to hold it. No, 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 no. If somebody holds the door for you as a courtesy, you got to say thank you. It's so fucking simple. It's not why should you do it? Just fucking do it. It's something super simple. Just say thank you. Because somebody was going out of their position to think about you. That person didn't have to hold the door for you. And they did because they were thinking about you, not as who you are, but as a person. The least thing you can do is say fucking thank you for that. But anyways, finding your shot. <laughs> um, you know, but like Blizzard was like the spot. 
you know, I, I was done with video game QA. Like after Superbot and doing PlayStation All Star, I, I didn't have another one in me. I didn't think I had another one in me, to be honest. I I, I thought I don't want to do this anymore. I, I feel like I'm really good at what I do, but it's not paying. You know, it's not paying the bills. It's not getting it done. And then Blizzard hit me up. Well, one of the recruiters hit me up, not Blizzard specifically, but one of the recruiters hit me up, said, hey, seems like you have experience, you know, blah, blah, blah. TLDR, I got the job. And then four and a half years at Blizzard prepped me so much to kind of figure out what I want to do with my life. You know, because... Before I hit Blizzard, I just assumed I wanted to do QA. That would go around from company to company, hopefully get a senior position, hopefully get a lead position, and somehow that's going to lead to management. And while some have had that luck, you know, it it just, the way I saw a lot of people do it, I wasn't going to do it. And, And a lot of them, you know, network, some brown knows it. I'm not one to brown nose at all. If I need to get my position by sticking my nose up your ass and telling you your shit smells like roses, not the position that I want. Of course, there are exceptions to this. (laughs) You know, I'm not going to fucking lie. If you want me to brown nose you for 50K a year, no. 80k how deep do you want my nose talk about it you know what i'm saying if it's like nostrils deep and i gotta you know take a big whiff in your colon man i might but i don't know how long that's just gonna fucking last (laughs) you know what i mean if it's like six digits like we're talking 150k I will tell you that your shit is the prettiest, most flavorful, smelliest shit ever. Everybody has their price and that's mine. (laughs) You know, it's 150K. You know what I'm saying? I will keep that nose brown as fuck until I wipe it off to go to Vegas with my wife. 100 on black, please. But the one thing that I did like about Blizzard is it was that it helped me find my shot. I knew what I had to do. And I know what I have to do. I'm good at what I do. But comparatively in my career, I was practicing shots that weren't that weren't reaping really any benefits other than experience. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I was essentially finding my shot at the driving range, going from company to company, testing video games, doing this. I was going to the driving range every day for six, seven years and practicing shots. Over and over and over and over and over, which which is awesome. Don't get me wrong. Practice practice is fucking key. The difference is it's easy for you to, to take your driver, to take your, your six iron, your sandwich, whatever. Go to driving range and just crack the fucking ball out of it with no need to really care about anything else other than is it straight and does it go far. Golf doesn't work that way. Golf is is, is precision. It's precise. It's a science. You know, having been around the game for the last two or three years very heavily just based on my son and having been exposed to the game, you know, at an early age, mainly because Tiger won the Masters. You know, like golf is one of the few sports where literally you are playing against yourself. To achieve the best score you can achieve and hope that it's better. You're not playing against the other person. Yes, they, they are posting scores too, but you're not playing against them per se. And, and and what I mean by that is basketball, football, you have opponents, right? There's defense, there's offense, there's rebounds. You, you are physically trying to stop other people from scoring. Baseball is somewhat similar. You have a pitcher whose 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 sole job is to make sure that the batters cannot get a good hit off to keep them from scoring. Golf is not like that. 
other people are there to post their best scores and hopefully that their best scores are the best best scores the bestest of the best scores <laughs> you are literally by yourself with the ball the ball goes where you hit it if you cannot find your shot you're not going to be hitting that ball very very well it's going to go left and go right you're going to mess up your follow-up shots. You're going to mess up the score for that hole. But that's you. That's solely you. If you score a 4 on a par 3, if you score a 5 on a par 4, if you score a 5 on a par 3, it's not because your opponents. It's not because of the other people who are playing that course. It's because of you. You didn't find your shot. You're not looking for your shot. You don't have a shot. You don't have these shots. So it wasn't until I got to Blizzard that all that time in, in the practice greens took me to like a golf course. I knew what I could do. I knew that I could hit these shots. I knew that I could do that. But it wasn't until Blizzard that I was able to proactively play those shots. You know what I'm saying? And then at that time, it was still a learning curve because I wasn't used to being so involved in a lot of decisions. I wasn't so used to being asked how to do certain things. I wasn't really even not necessarily comfortable, but I wasn't ready to be asked to do a lot of things. I was at Blizzard and was like, hey, do you want to do it? Yes. Why? Why would somebody who wasn't really necessarily ready mentally ask to do these things or, or say yes to these things? Because I needed to find my shot. I needed to find my shot on an actual golf course. I needed to do everything possible, play different courses at Blizzard. You know what I mean? That That's the way I looked at it. And that's the way I look at it now, going back. I mean, that's not the way I looked at it then. To me, it was just another level of the game that was a little bit more intense. But looking back, you know, I had to find my shot. And Blizzard let me find my shot. They they, they let me play a bunch of the Blizzard courses. You know, on, on part of the app team. Um, doing the shop tab. Doing a bunch of other things. Teams that I joined. Teams that I had to lead. Teams that I essentially had to create while there. And I got paid shit. I'm not going to lie. It was good. Like, don't, don't get me wrong. When I say I got paid shit, I say that because if I look at where I am now compared to what they were paying me. Man rough times but at that time the stability they offered me you know provided me with the opportunity to to move out and do my and do my stuff while i was finding my shot i found my shot about four about four years in and unfortunately i had outgrown the course so i wanted to go play a different course course not necessarily harder and to be fair it's not even it wasn't even necessarily more challenging it, it was just exposure to different to again different areas different parts of what I felt I needed at the time I was finding different shots for different situations at the current spot but I outgrew that course a long long time ago and it's just now I'm, I'm having a new course and, and this course has me excited and you know I look back at 13 years and I go man I can't believe where I'm at like I, I literally cannot believe where I'm at 13 years ago I only wanted to do this because I thought it would be the easiest job for me to have the funnest job I could have and 13 years later, I'm getting this great opportunity to work for one of the best video game companies, or at least one of the most famous. I, don't, I can't say best because I haven't worked there yet, but one of the most famous video game companies in the world. And they're going to pay me. <laughs> and they're going to pay me. And they're going to pay me well, too. You know, it's trippy. Like, it, it trips me out to think that I've, I've been that blessed in my life. 
but all of it's just because I, I I never gave up on my shots. I I kept going everywhere trying to find my shots. And it's possible. It's possible. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter who the fuck you are. I am a high school dropout from Long Beach. I grew up in East LA for the first 10 years of my life. I lived in West Hollywood during the whole, like, I guess, fucking swallow up of the neighborhood by, by MS-13. You know, some other shit that popped off in that neighborhood we left that neighborhood went to long beach and you know it wasn't too bad but some of the some of the schools and shit were hood and ghetto and little by little neighborhood kind of went downhills which is why we moved out here to the oc near the house of mouse and i'm able to do this i'm able to do this you know what i'm saying like like in the grand scheme of things like the money Isn't like, oh my god, like, oh, this guy, you know, like, the but the money to me for what I'm making now, I never thought would be possible, ever. You know, there, there are people who came out of, of school, college, with, with degrees, who, who essentially be making less than I do. And part of the reason why, I'm going to tell you this right now, part of the reason why is because you are not willing to find your shot. You are content with staying at the driving range, practicing the same shots that you know you can do for the sake of saying, you know what, I see progress. Instead of shooting 260 with my driver, I'm shooting 270 now. That's the progress you're concerned about. And if that's the progress, if that's the only progress you care about, fine. I'm not one to be like, oh, no, that's not happiness. That's happiness. That's happiness. If you are content, if you are happy with yourself, where you are happy getting those incremental improvements to your to your shot then that's fine that's your happiness who am i to take that away from you nobody i ain't nobody to take that away from you if you are happy there that's fine that's cool be happy i'm happy for you if you can be happy then i'm happy for you this more goes into lines of 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 people who day after day, bitch, I'm not getting paid enough. I'm not getting paid this. I'm not doing this. I'm, what are you doing to improve yourself? What are you doing to find your shot? What are you doing to stop being at the driving range and actually playing courses where you can join tournaments and play? Yes, a lot of golf metaphors here. I get it. This was, this was my damn weekend. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Everything was in golf metaphors. That's what being the father of a golfer does to you. You know what I'm saying? You start thinking, you know, and, and we're in ways that you can express to them. And then you start connecting shit to your life. If you are, if you are so, so, so done with a lot of the shit you guys say you're done with, do something about it. It's not impossible, especially if you were smart enough to go get an education. I did not. I did not. Everything that I have earned in my life is through the school hard knocks, you know, stupid OG ghetto bullshit. You know, it's, it's just it's just by getting the opportunities, by playing the public courses, per se. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I found places where I could play, where they would let me play. You know, big shout out to my first boss ever, Dave Diaz from Sony, just... 13 years ago, man, I gave that guy so much fucking bullshit and nonsense. And he was the one that let me play golf at the courses. You know what I'm saying? He was the one that got me off the driving, the driving greens and the driving range. I said, hey, you know, what? how about you come play my course? If it wasn't for that man right there, I mean, I, I never got the chance to actually thank him either because, you know, shit went down. And I was a 23, 24 year old know it all fucking loudmouth asshole. And. I respected the dude, but, you know, it was just me being young and fucking dumb. If I can go back, you know, I drink a beer with that dude and tell him how much I appreciate the fact that he gave me the opportunity. And because of him, because of him. And I say because of him, because I don't know if anybody else would give me the shot. Because I did try for like maybe two years before that to try to get a job somewhere else. And nobody even gave me a call back. He was the one that said, yeah, no. You know what? What video game do you like? Oh, yeah, it doesn't matter. Come here and work. (laughs) 
he was the first one to give me that shot to give me that opportunity and he had so many opportunities to fucking fire me too just because of my mouth and my attitude and he didn't and he was honest about why he didn't he didn't like my attitude but he liked my work ethic he liked my passion he liked my abilities for somebody who didn't have a college education he was somewhat surprised that I could think of things this way and because of him, now I'm, I'm I'm two weeks away from from being somewhere where I never thought I would fucking be. I never thought I would be be at at this place in particular. Because I I did apply like five or six years ago, and I got turned down like hard. <laughs> Went for the interview very next day. Sorry, no. <laughs> and you know, five six years later, I was like, hey, you know what? Come play with us. <laughs> and it trips me out, man. It trips me out. But it's because I kept practicing my shot. Doesn't matter where I was, man. Doesn't matter where I was and who was above me. If if I hated the person on top of me, then I hated that one person. Whether it was a supervisor, a lead, another coworker, it doesn't matter. I hated that one person. I never took out my anger on my team. If my team needed anything from me. I would always help my team because it wasn't their fault that my life was negative. They understood that. They knew that. And and and, and also I not that I took solace in in the fact that this was happening, but the fact that my negative situation was not an exception to the rule. It was kind of how it was for a lot of people, including the people on my team. You know, so when we would go out to the back and take a smoke break and talk shit, I found comfort in that. That I wasn't the only one going through shit. That yes, my situation is shitty. Hey, but so is yours. Let's be friends. Let's make our situation not as shitty by being nice to each other, being there for each other. That we can bitch at each other. That we can be miserable together. You know what I mean? Because that was the only way we were going to get through it. There was, no, there was no point for us to be miserable at each other when we could be miserable together, talk shit, go back to do our job the way that we knew we knew how to do our job, which was very fucking great. And go about our days and just keep fucking hustling. That's what I did. That's what a lot of people did. A lot of people that I worked with at Blizzard left. For not necessarily greener pastures, but the ones that were more adamant that their life wasn't as good as they thought it should be. A lot of them left. A lot of them I coached out of there. A lot of them refused. A lot of them refused to leave because they were comfortable. Because they were scared that maybe they didn't have the skills or the knowledge or this, this, and that. You know, they didn't want to play at a different course. I tell people, no, 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 you can't stay here, man. You're going to improve your game, but it's going to go to waste. Once you dominate a course, what are you looking to improve? The, the improvements will be incremental at best. At best, they'll be incremental. But the shots you practice may not be. You need to go somewhere where you can test out the new shots, where you can test out the new tech that you study. I also like fighting games, too. You hear tech a lot. You know, that's what you that's what we have to do in life as a people, man. You got to find your shot. Don't be scared to take your shot once you find it. If you're comfortable in your abilities, if you know your abilities, if you've been practicing your abilities for so long. Find a place that would appreciate it. Don't be so scared. The worst thing somebody can tell you is no. Then you just try again. You just try again. I don't even know how many times I've been turned down for jobs I was super excited about getting because it it, it would have meant more money, more stability, maybe a little bit more freedom. A little bit more experience in different 
aspects of of this industry, not necessarily just the video game industry, but just the the, the electronical technological industry. And I got turned down for so many. Even though some of the recruiters and people were like, "Oh no, you seem like a great fit. You have this. You have that. You have that." But if the one person on top says no, then the, then, it, then it's no. That's life. What am I supposed to do? So, all right. So I mean, I guess it doesn't matter now. So, and, and part of the reason why I'm like this is because so now I have this this wonderful opportunity coming in two weeks. About two months ago, I had another opportunity. People approach me around 11 p.m. Recruiters, 11 p.m. at night, almost midnight by the time I got a hold of this person saying, hey, we have this great opportunity with an L.A. client. You seem like you have the educational fit, blah, 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 blah. Call me back. Okay, cool. Called them back. We started talking. whoop de whoop de whoop de woo Said, okay, cool. We're going to hook up with this guy. going to talk to this guy. Blah, 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 blah. This guy tells me, okay, cool, look, I won't give you a shot. You don't have the experience. You don't have the experience. But I'm going to give you a shot. Here, here are a, a list of questions. You need to memorize these, and I'm going to ask you these questions, and we're going to go forward. Okay, cool. I looked over the questions. I copied them to try to break them down to, under, to, to help me memorize them. But then what I ended up doing instead of just focusing on the questions, which was all I was asked to do, is I created like this document to break down to break down the questions into a document form, but I wasn't asked to do that. So the day before I sent this document over, we talked to this guy. And then the thing is, even at that, I had an extra day because he had a meeting and we couldn't he had to postpone our, our, our telephone conference. He gave me an extra day, and I didn't do anything with that extra day. He calls me next day. We talk. He's just asking me questions. He's asking me the questions that he gave me the link to that I had fucking four days to study. That's all he's concerned about. I asked him, hey, you know, did you check out the document that I did to kind of explain how I would test these things? He's like, yeah, yeah. He didn't give a fuck. That wasn't what he asked for. That wasn't what he asked for. So he's asking me these questions. I'm memorizing some of the answers because I, I, I skimmed the document, you know, and I remembered some of these things. At the end of it, shut down. Shut the fuck down. He was like, sorry, man. I, I, I can't in good conscience push you forward. I can't. I've never had a client bomb so many questions. Like, literally, he straight out fucking told me, you bomb so many fucking questions. I was like, no, please. I know I can get it. And I, I know, I know for a fact, like I'm literally pleading with this guy over the fucking phone. Please, 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 please. Sorry, I can't. I'm like, no, like once I get in there, like I know it doesn't sound like it, but once I get in there, I can do the job. I promise. Like, I know I can do this job. It's not complicated. No, I can't. All right, cool. Understood. At this point, I'm like tearing up. I was fucking devastated. I was fucking broken because the money they were talking about would have been very, very helpful. I I broke, but that was my fault. I gave a person something that they weren't asking for. I didn't complete the objective. I wasn't practicing the right shot. You know, this guy was asking me to practice, you know, little pitch shots. And I'm over here trying to fucking drive this shit out 350 yards. It was the wrong shot. I practiced the wrong shot. I took the wrong fucking shot. I found a shot that was incorrect. And because of it, I got turned down. And it, the company is huge. This company is huge. Both companies are actually really, really big worldwide. Um, the one that I got turned down for is, is probably top five big companies in the world. You know, if we look in the grand scheme of of of, of uh, recognition, 
where they're connected, what they're connected to, everything else, just in, in the grand scheme of the techn of the technological universe. Just just as far as this industry goes, the video game industry goes and just this this part of it. You know, they're they're easily top five in the world. In my opinion, they're they're top five in the world. And the company I'm going to work for, I think easily top ten. Easily. Um you know, but we're talking about the top five. So they they turned me down. I was broken, dude. I I I was fucking devastated. Man, man, I was I was I was on that one for like three or four days, like just feeling depressed. Just I wasn't really mad at anybody. I didn't I didn't try to 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 output the negativity, but I I was pretty dead inside. I'm still here. I'm still alive. Maybe, maybe what happened happened for a reason. Maybe because I wasn't going to be my calling. That was, that was the answer to a short term solution. Maybe that wasn't going to be my calling. And you know what? Maybe even though it would have been a marvelous opportunity. And if this opportunity coming up wasn't taking place and this other company called me back saying, Hey, remember you want to try again? Yes. Fuck. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. I would not now, you know what I'm saying? I got an offer on the table. Not now. I'm going to take this offer. You know, but what can I do about it? I took the wrong shot. I fucked up. Took me three days to recover. (laughs) But you just go back. You go back and you do what you know how to do. Do your job very, very well. Be very, very good to to the people that you work with. And I'm pretty sure at some point, there's gonna be somebody that that runs up on this and be like, yeah, I remember this motherfucker. He wasn't he was such a fucking asshole. Yeah, if I was an asshole to you, I was an asshole to you. Because frankly, you were probably not worth my fucking time and you were probably a piece of shit. I mean, I'm just gonna put it out there like that. If if I treat you like an asshole, it's most likely because you were a piece of shit. And a piece of shit recognizes an asshole. That fucking simple, man. For everybody else, you know, I try to tell them, just find your shot. Man, I let them know. I even let my son know. I was like, what am I supposed to do about this? Do you, would you have to want me to come home and beat you because I didn't get this job? Would you have want me to come home and beat your mom because I didn't get this job? Would you have want me to just be angry about this? Like, I was, I was, I was broken inside, but, like, I wasn't going to be angry with you. Like, what was the point? What, what would that have fixed for me to be angry with you, to be negative about a situation that I can't fix? And this is what I try to explain to him on the golf course every single time. Because every time he shanks, every time he shanks a fucking swing, it's, ah, blah, blah, my life is over. I'm just like, bro, <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. I'm hitting it perfect. I'm like, no, you're not. How can you say that? You're not. No, I am. I'm pract- the swing that you told me to. I'm like, you not swinging perfect. I'm like, this sport is a sport of science. If your arm is straight, your head is down. If your club, if your club hits the ball the correct way, if you get the correct swing with the correct contact, the ball will go where you want the ball to go. That is the beauty of golf. That is the absolute beauty of golf. If the ball, far be it from variables like wind or or a lie or something like that, just the general principle of golf if your swing is spot on the ball will reflect that if your swing is perfect the ball will demonstrate the results of your swing a slight variant in your swing whether you dropped your shoulder too much, you cracked your wrist, you dropped your forearm, you didn't put enough hip rotation, you contacted the ball incorrectly with the club face, whatever. Any slight variance in that swing, the ball will show it. If you don't like what you see, 
when you hit the ball, work better at fixing it. But why are you screaming? Why are you so upset? Your bitching and crying is not going to make the next shot better. It's not going to scare the balls to go straighter, to go further. You have to make it so. You have to find your shot. Oh. And little by little, he's been there. But I found myself telling my kids and thinking like, man, this is what I've been doing my whole life. That's all I can tell other people to do is you got to find, maybe not in golf terms, but find your shot. Find it. Go out there, practice. If you want to, if you want to do coding, the the one thing that upsets me about this world right now is that so so many people bitch about how little they get paid, how hard they have to work, how they have to do this, how they have to do that. I get it. Life is fucking hard. Believe me, I'm not making this podcast fucking filled to the jimmies with fucking dollar bills here. Like, I'm not, like, I'm going to be honest with you. As of 3.59 p.m., July 7, 2009, I have literally $4 in my fucking wallet after paying rent. I have $4 in my fucking pocket after paying rent. Between the family, us, we have 80 bucks to last us the next two weeks. If wifey sisters are so compassionate enough this time to let us borrow some money then we'll be okay we'll pay them back we've done it before she's done it before we'll pay them back and and we'll have money to kind of go but as of right now four o'clock july 7th we have 84 dollars to last us two weeks that is our life pay bills pay this pay schooling pay golf pay all this stuff and then we have to see how we live or survive to the next paycheck in two weeks Thankfully, that won't be the case. I won't have to fucking live paycheck to paycheck. And if I do, cool, because now I get paid every week instead of every two weeks. So I can I can I can spend my money a little bit more frivolously, knowing that I have backup. It's gotta at some point we gotta balance the fucking spending with what I bring in to make sure that the bills are still covered, right? But I mean that was my thing. That was my thing. Was that I'm looking forward and going, man. I'm going to come to a point where I'm going to be able to pay all my bills, including rent and still have money for beer. <laughs> still have money for Taco Bell. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like still have money to put away a little bit for future purchases, future trips, future whatever. Like that's going to be a possibility. Because I, I refuse to give up. I refuse to give up after the other company told me, nah, sorry, we can't have you, brah. It wasn't even the company per se. It was just somebody acting in their best behalf. And to be honest, I I can't even fault the guy for doing what he did. Because I completed something that he did not ask for. I took the shot that was not correct for the situation. I drove it when I just needed to be pitching that shit. You know, from the rough. You know, cool little 20-yard chip. Boop. Boop. Try to get it close to the hole. Boop. Maybe chip a couple in. Instead, I went out the fucking driver and just drove that shit and broke a window. <laughs> but for anybody out there, man, and I know I deviated from all that shit. The shit that pisses me off is like, you're going to bitch about stuff. You will spend hours upon hours. And I get on my son about this shit, too. But that's my son. I'm not trying to get on anybody about this. I'm just trying to, to impart some knowledge and some of the hardship that I have going through so you can make your situation better because you don't want to live my life. My life might sound cool. I mean, it is, my life is great, but my life is great for me. You know what I mean? Like, yes, I have 84 bucks to last me two weeks, but my life is great for me. Wife is alive. Kid is alive. Everybody that I care for in my family is alive. The ones who have passed live long, great lives. The ones who have passed, I don't give a shit about. I don't give a shit about you. It's facts. 
just because we blood are connected by some sort of last name doesn't make you my family. But we are so connected to everything. You'll spend hours on Instagram, on Twitter, on Facebook, while driving, while running, while at the gym. While you spend so much fucking time worried about other people's shit that you're not worried about yourself. You spend so much fucking time liking this tweet by this famous person, liking this post by your friend, liking this post by your tia Maria, liking this fucking picture on the Insta from this cat, you know, and you go in these cycles. Oh, I got to see what's up with this person on YouTube and I got to do this and I got to do that. And that's fine if you say, well, what about you? You're doing a podcast. Yeah, I'm doing this for my hobby. I'm doing this because I want to do this. I'm doing this because this is therapy for me to get these thoughts out there for myself. But at the same time, if I say something, I I can help at least one more fucking person. Then none of this is to waste. None of it. If I get one, if I get one view combined between this and YouTube, and that one person goes, you know what? I respect that. Or even the person goes, you know what? Mm, fuck that guy. That's fine. But it's a it, it it's it's a it's a perspective that's out there for everybody to look at. And maybe one day, who knows? Maybe some you know some people would just randomly go like, "Hey, this is pretty old, but let's let's see and let's see what it sounds like." That's why I do this. Just to have for me, it's therapy to be able to speak to to put out my thoughts out there. If they're judged, they're fucking judged. So the fuck what? Don't care. But you spend so much time worrying about other people's shit during other parts of your life that you're not taking time to enjoy your life. You're not taking time to focus on yourself. If you took all the time that you spent on fucking Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, liking pictures, liking posts, talking nonsense, commenting negatively, if you took all that fucking time that you can think about over the last, depending on how old you are, we'll just say fucking five years, minimum five years. If you would have spent all that time learning a second language, learning a, learning a computer language, taking classes at a community college, taking, doing this, doing that, you'd be in a lot better position now than you are bitching about your current position. Even if you were still at your current position making bullshit ass pay, you would have built yourself. You would have practiced the correct shots to help you move along further in your career and in your life. I waste a lot of time. I'm not going to fucking lie. I've, I've wasted a lot of time. I've, I've wasted a tremendous amount of time on shit that doesn't mean anything that would have made me better. But when I was at work, I was at work. I was making myself better at work. I'm not on fucking YouTube at work. I'm not on Facebook at work. I'm not on fucking Instagram. I'm not on Twitter. And if the time ever comes where I am on there a lot, it's because I stopped giving a fuck about my job and I'm looking for a way out. And I'm hoping that you will fire me so I can collect unemployment. Those, those are the fucking facts. But other than that, if, I'm, if you give me a job, there's no social media. Because for those eight hours plus, my main concern is to do my job better than I did it the day before. That when somebody asks me, hey, can you do this to support this team? Can you do this for this team that I'm doing that for that team? So we make everything better. So when we release something that I can stand behind and be like, yeah, I wasn't distracted by fucking Twitter and Facebook and all the bullshit. No, no, no. I put my attention to this shit. Because I've been blessed in my life. The people have seen me with the jackets that I've got from Black Ops and other places. They go, oh, my God, you worked on Call of Duty. You worked on this. Oh, my God. You know, thank you so much, dude. The game is so awesome. I don't know what you did, but if you were in any way connected, you guys did an awesome job. Straight out. I even came to a point where some guy goes like, I don't give a fuck if you were the guy just bringing them lunches. You helped them. I, I, I enjoy your game. 
Cool? Cool? Then that's the reason why I do what I do. I'm not worried about anybody else. I'm worried about the people that I can't see. The person who's going to play the game, play or, 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 or use a product that I'm trying to test here. To make myself better so I make their experiences better. That's my concern. I don't give a fuck what my friends have to do on Facebook. I don't give a fuck what my friends have to do on Twitter. I don't give a fuck what The Rock has to do on Instagram. I love The Rock. The Rock's fucking awesome. I don't give a fuck about his Instagram, his Twitters, or anything else that he's fucking doing in the times that I'm at fucking work. Because he does not give a fuck about me in the time that he... He doesn't give a fuck about me ever because he doesn't fucking know me. Right? Even if it comes to people that he does know... He probably doesn't give a fuck about them if they're not adding anything to him to grow personally. Not that he doesn't care about them as people, because I'm pretty sure bought out tequila and some fucking sushi. He would love to spend time with everybody that he's ever cared about, no matter where they're from. He wishes that. But this man is a hustler. He goes forward. You keep thinking forward. You go forward. If nothing is there to help him go forward, why the fuck do you want to stay in the present and look back? That's the way I look at him. I don't know if that's if any of that is fucking true. I'm saying, but that's the way I look at it. I, I I look at them. I see a fucking hustler. I see a dude that just worked hard for everything that he fucking did. I'm trying to achieve that. Maybe not to that level, but I'm trying to achieve my level of that level. You know what I'm saying? Like that dude is a Hall of Famer. Grandmaster, best, you know, whatever, ever. In the world. <laughs> you know, I'm trying to be something like that in the SoCal area from my profession. Where people can look at me and go like, hey, he knows his shit. He knows his stuff. <laughs> That's all I'm trying to achieve. But not for any type of gloats or anything like that. It's just that's why that's a, a level of success that I want to have for myself. Knowing that I have achieved something because I focused on myself to improve myself. And people can see that. Not for fame, not for glamour, not for anything else. But just so I know that I did it correctly to a point where I did it right. Because other people are taking notice. I guess a little bit of acknowledgement, but I'm not doing it for anything else. You know what I'm saying? And every job that I've gotten, I feel like that's the acknowledgement of like, okay, you know what you're talking about. Come here and work for us. Come here and, and do this for us. So I focus on myself. When my kid goes back to school, I'm going to focus on myself again. To learn new stuff that I should have been learning when I was 26 instead of 36. When I should have been doing this when I was 28, 29. 31, 32, 33, 34. Maybe started this when I was 35. But no, I'm going to start it when I'm 36. Because I need to find that shot. I need to find other shots. I need to learn new tech. I need to be able to play at the at the bigger, greener golf courses. Or if not, be allowed to the bigger, greener golf courses at the next place that I'm going to. Because they do provide that. That will be an opportunity that I will have. But if somehow the opportunity does not present itself while I'm there, I need to go open the door somewhere else. Somewhere else is going to let me play on the course once I practice these shots. It's never too late. I'm not content with what I have. I'm very, very happy and I'm very, very blessed with what I've been able to accomplish, with what I've been able to do. But I am not content. The drive is still there to improve myself, to be better. Because I have to find my shot. I have to. I haven't found it yet. Maybe maybe this next place will be it. Maybe this next place will be it. I don't know. I don't know. But I don't want to go in thinking that that's what it is. That it's going to be there. So I got to keep improving myself. And if somehow they go, hey, you know what? I think we're going to keep this guy. And, you know, make him an offer. And make sure that he never wants to fucking leave. And, and that, would, that would be the best fucking thing ever. Right? Like. For me, you know, six months later, a year later, they go, hey, you know what? We like the way you did. You want to you want to get, you know, you want to take this job, blah, blah, blah. It comes with this pay because blah, blah, blah. Yes. <laughs> you know, two or three years after that, they go, hey, you know, you've been rocking this role. You want to try this role? Yes. Hey, you want to try to do this? And if I can keep if I can keep climbing to a higher rank at the next place that I go to, then that is the fucking dream. That is the dream. 
But if I can't, I have to go make the dream come true for myself. I have to go somewhere else, and I don't know where that place is yet. If it's not in the place it comes after. But the hustle never stops. When I come home, when I start working there, my kid goes back to school. When I come home, it's going to be, okay, cool. I got an hour, two hours to do this. To practice this. To make sure by the end of the year, I have something to show for this. Just never stop. Never stop. Never, ever, ever fucking stop. Put down your fucking phone. Put down Facebook. Put down Twitter. Put down Instagram. Put down YouTube. Especially when you're fucking driving. Especially when you're fucking driving. Put all that shit down. Worry about where you are. Where you want to be. Focus on yourself. Instead of fucking going on fucking Facebook for an hour to talk fucking nonsense. Get a fucking self-help book. If you if you suffer from, from something within yourself. If you suffer motivation. If you suffer inspiration. Find somewhere where you can get that. It's not going to be fucking Facebook. I'm going to tell you that right fucking now. It's not going to be Facebook. My Facebook group is really, really small. I love everybody that I'm I'm, I'm in friends on Facebook with. We use that as kind of like a sounding board for ourselves. To let each other know that we're alive, that we still think about the other person. We like when something good happens, we get sad when, you know, bad shit happens. And we're there, you know, it's, it's an easy way for us to comfort each other and talk to each other now that we don't all work together. That's fine. I get that aspect of it. But when you got friends, and 90% of those people you never fucking met, but you're interested in something that they're fucking saying, it's a waste of fucking time. It's a waste of fucking time. Accolade that time to yourself. Stop giving people your time for nonsense. Take that time back and prove yourself. Sooner or later, you will be the best you you can be for that moment. And that moment will bring you something that you want. Whether it's a better position, better pay, more responsibilities, a better life, a better frame of thought. No matter what the fuck it is. The minute, the second you start loving yourself and start focusing on yourself first to make yourself the bet, the best you, you can be not only for yourself, but the people around you and the people you want to go out there. Everything just seems to flow a little bit easier. So all you can really do is practice the shots until you can take your shot. All you can really do until you get to where you want to be is find your shot. Once you find it, nobody can ever take that away from you. And you will be prepared for other opportunities. But in order to achieve that, you have to focus on yourself first and stop focusing on other people's shit. Stop focusing on negative stuff. You can't. You just can't. I understand situations are different. I'm talking about like extreme situations and we're not going to discuss what those extreme situations are. But if you feel blah, 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 I'm going to see what an extreme situation is not. I don't have time. I don't. I don't know how to get started. I don't know. I don't know what other fucking excuses. If you have time to be on Facebook two hours a day, you have time to improve yourself two hours a day. It's that fucking simple. Anyways, yeah, leave it off at that. Um, <laughs> so thank you guys for listening. Um, this is episode numero six. And yeah, I mean, this one's a little bit shorter. Yeah, I felt like I wanted to keep it shorter. I, I thought it was going to be shorter than this. Um, but once I get talking, I start talking about random shit. Then I say other shit. Then I come back to the stuff I was really talking about. And it's kind of how it goes. That's why I do this. It's just, it's just I, I like to, I don't know, I, I it's therapy for me, man. I just kind of get those thoughts out there. And, like, sometimes I listen to them and I'm like, was I really thinking about that? It's fucking weird. But anyways, so, yeah, um, if you guys would like to email at any given time, please do so. It uh, My email here is mobanterpodcast at gmail.com. That's M-O-E 
B A N T E R P O D C A S T at gmail.com. Right? M O E B A N T E R P O D C A S T at gmail.com. Yeah, Mo Banter Podcast. Um, you know, very few questions are super taboo. Um, but send them. You never know. I might answer them. If you if you so much want my opinion or my answer to them. Um, but other than that, you know, just love yourself, love the people out there, man. Don't focus on negative shit that you can't control. And if something that you can't control, control it and see how you can improve it for yourself. Because nobody's going to hold your hand and make a situation better for you. If you're willing to accept the shitty situation you're in, you have to go out there and try to make it yourself. You have to go out there and find yo shot. <laughs> All right, y'all. So until next time, this has been Mo. Please take care of yourself and take care of each other. Thank you guys once again. Anybody who listens, thank you for listening. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.